let's talk about server side and client side validations. We're going to see this all later, but we're going to get an overview here and take a peek at some code to see how we can do things the right way. Now, the client side is a great place to do JavaScript and sometimes you have to do dynamic JavaScript with PHP or scripting languages creating JavaScript for the client side and passing it back to the browser. Now, when the user is looking at a screen in the browser, they're looking at this and interacting with this form on the client side. So you can catch things here that you don't have to actually catch on the server side and then send back to the client on the client side. So the thing to do is to check here, send it to the server, also check there because you can have hackers trying to get into your website. You could have faulty JavaScript code, for example, and you can have browsers that don't support JavaScript even today. And that's something you have to take into consideration. So we'll see how to effectively do the JavaScript side, the client side, and then the server side, and how to take care of and look out for some things. Well, we have user registration and register. This register files is in the scripting folder, and these are identical to the files that you're going to see later in the website interactivity that we're going to talk about in great detail. Here we're going to give a good overview. All right, so the register file is what you're going to do after the form fields are passed to you, whether they're in a get or a post. You want to make sure that the page itself isn't going to be cached. You're going to rely on session information most of the time or in a robust way. I like to use session data. So when I go back to the client, I don't have to worry about setting things in a unorthodox or difficult way. I can set it just from session variables and you want to see the later videos on how to work with sessions, include files, are in the function section and things like that. So we set that up. We then require certain fields based on what we've been talking about. I have an array of the fields that I want to process and whether it's a get or a post, I reset that and then do a loop here to actually check for the get magic quotes underscore GPC. We want to make sure that this is set on or off. We want to deal with it whether it's on or off and this is going to add backslashes and deal with null characters. So you can't have an extra single quote inserted into your query string, for example, and this is going to go into your database query and it could potentially mess up your whole database, corrupt your data and do all kinds of terrible things. So we'll take a look at that and why, and we'll talk about how it is going to affect us in terms of SQL injection and things like that. Add slashes is going to add those slashes if this particular get magic quotes is not set on by default. So you have to take that into consideration. And then we insert nulls. We'll see this later. This is not important now. This is just making sure that we can insert nulls into the database. But the validations that we're concerned with are checking is set for the variables that we're going to set in our database that we need required fields. If they're not set, we need to check to see if they're set first. If they're not set, then we're going to resend to the form. Otherwise, we can continue. So resend to the form is just going to package up these variables again, send them to the session, and then just call the page that we previously came from with a flag of red. And inside that page, it's going to know what to do because of the flag. Now people can play with your flags if they understand what you're doing here. So you can also set that flag internally as a session variable, but it's up to you. If somebody wants to set the flag, have it go back. It's not going to do anything. It's just going to let you know that this was incorrect, this was incorrect in the form, and that was incorrect, so correct it. So it's not really going to do anything. It's just a status. And then we have form variables here that have to have something in them, like I said. They have to be set, but they also can't be blank. Otherwise, go back to the form. You can also worry about the length of your session variables because now everything's in the session after we set it there. And we're talking about the string length function, and these are all ORs, and these are all the fields that we need to have certain sizes before we can start to, to think about processing them. And otherwise, we resend to the form with a white flag there. And then we also want to check to make sure we have these particular questions that if they are larger than a certain size as well, then we actually want to do a substring instead of sending back to the form because we don't care that they're too long. We should know what this data is, but we just prevent this from happening on the database side because you never know what's going to happen based on your code. 
most likely it'll just get truncated anyway. But that's just another way to truncate it yourself. If it's greater than 60, we actually want to do a substring to force only the first 60 characters for questions that we might get sent in there. Just another check that you can do, but not necessarily a necessity. And that's the validation part. Then we're going to do the processing of the database activity here that you'll see in the user registration file. But in the user registration file here, not the one that we're going to see later in the other section, this is going to be what we're doing if we have to come back to this file. If everything's fine, we should just check the session. And if those variables are actually set, then we're going to output the session variables into our form fields as you can see here, and then do some JavaScript as we're going to see later to set these selection boxes. And I'll explain that as well. But at this point, we're just dealing with the flags that come back. So effective form validation, once you get to the client side, you have to fill out the form and then send it to the server side, check some client side validations, but send it to the server side. And then on the server side, you're dealing with things, making sure they fit, making sure variables were set, making sure somebody didn't try to inject SQL into your code. And if all that is going good, then you can start to process your SQL. Otherwise, you want them to come back to the form, and then you want to show them a message. And that's really what we're doing, but we're doing it as session variables. We're using our array again to just take the variables that we want for the form, reset it to make sure that it wasn't moved to another value, to the second value, for example, and then we can check the session to make sure it was set and that it doesn't equal null, which is just supposed to go into the database. And then we are going to set some hidden fields. And those hidden fields are going to serve as the selection indexes for our list boxes so that we can set that via JavaScript. We'll see that later. But that's why it's there. And this is the important thing. We're going to check to see, and we're doing this a different way with the HTTP get bars. We're going to check to see if the flag was set and we use is set there. And if it was, then we set a flag variable. Otherwise flag is going to be the empty string. We could also do errors as well. If we wanted to do robust error checking to send it back to the client. And you can view the different messages here, yellow, red, blue, pink, white, whatever you want to add there to this switch statement to process that. And we can see that if the email is already in the database, that's one database check that we didn't talk about. If the fields aren't all filled in that need to be filled in or required, maybe your session has expired because the session expires after a certain timeout period, or like a special code that wasn't in a database or something like that, or that the fields were too long for the database. That would be that white case. And again, as you need to use this, you can put this in a function and include it somewhere else or what have you. The part that's going to get added here goes into this part here, and this is where the error or the status is going to come up. Otherwise, and most times you're going to have session variables that show up here. If they don't, that means they weren't filled out to begin with. And that's it to the validation. That's really how we're going to process this later. This is really an overview. and. It's designed to explain it to you in such a way that you get all your bases covered. You can watch the video as many times as you want to really get the idea, but you're going to see this in the full example in the website interactivity section. The overview is really there to guide you to get to the advanced section to really go into the code to see how it works with a firm foundation. And then you really, really understand all the pieces that I do here to put things together. You can do things a couple of different ways, many different ways. You don't have to rely on my way of doing it, but I feel that this is an effective way. There are other effective ways and they could be more effective or less effective. It's up to you and how much work you want to put into it really. And that really says it all, how much work you want to put into it and putting in work now means that you don't have to put in work later. So that's something to keep in mind as well.